Hi everyone, welcome to your second video on delegates. In this video I'm going to show you how to add multiple methods to a delegate and also how to remove those methods once you have added them. So, to add a myth method to a delegate is just the delegate name, so M in our case. Well, we're going to add stuff to M. And we're just going to go plus equal to M1. Then we're going to go M plus equal to M2. And we're going to go M plus equal to some method. Now I'm just going to write a few things so it's easier to see what's going on. So we're going to go M. So we're going to invoke M. Then we're going to write something in the console. Um, yeah, and we're going to copy that and paste that. So now we're going to see, um, sorry, now we're going to see just M being invoked. In this case, M is just going to type onto the console M called. Then we're going to add these three methods to M then we're going to call M again and this time you should see M called M1 called um, M2 which is some method so M2 called and we also added some method to M again so we're going to see two of those in a row so let's try that out Oops. There we go. Huh, I have that in the wrong order as well. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So, before adding more methods, just m called. After adding more methods, we see m called, m1 called, and some method called twice. Now, we're going to remove a few methods from our delegate so so we're going to remove m1 and m and m2 so we're just going to copy this bit of code over and instead of plus equal to it's just minus equal to so let's run that and holy be Jesus, I forgot something. I forgot to run the M. There we go. So, after removing M1 plus M2, so after removing this from the invocation list, so M1 doesn't get called after removing M1, and since M2 is a reference to some method, that also doesn't get called, but if in, we didn't didn't remove some method from the invocation list, so that gets called once. Um, sorry for the sudden change in this video, but I didn't want to split this video up into another part. Another part. And um, this goes along with what I was talking about before about concatenating methods into a delegate. I just wanted to show you what happens to the return value and input, um, well, mainly the return value when you concatenate delegates. So I've got a new delegate here, which is a, which has a return type of string, and it also takes in a string as an input parameter. And I went ahead and created three instances of that um, delegate. 
The first one is called Reverse, which pretty much returns whatever is in, um, returns the input parameter in reverse format. Um, the second one is called Length, which returns the length of the sh input parameter in stream format. The third one is called contains zdf, which checks if the in input string has zdf in it. If it um, and after that, it adds zdf to the string, and just returns whether it has zdf in it before you added it. That is. And I've got one called all methods, which is which pretty much calls reverse length and call contains the df and the input parameter that we're going to be working with is called s and s is just set to a string and I've called all methods twice and you will output whatever the value is onto the screen so what we should see is whether the string contains the df or not well, the, obviously, the first time this goes around, oh, sorry, um, I forgot to tell you when you concatenate delegates like this, only the return value of the very last thing that you added to your delegate counts. So, because I've added these in this order, so reverse length and contains the df, only the return value of contains the df is relevant. The other ones, it doesn't matter what they return. Anyway, um, so the first time contains the df gets called, we should we should see false because the first time around it doesn't contain the df. But once you add it to the string, the second uh, second time around, do you think this will be true? Well, let's find out. Let's try and run the program. And no, uh, both times it is false. So I just wanted to say, even though a string is a reference type, when we pass it into a method, it gets passed by value, not reference. And therefore, x here only exists in that method and nowhere else. And I know this is an, a video on reference, um, sorry, by on passing values, but it's important for what I'm, what I'm about to do. Say you want, um, say say you want to add x. I'm sorry, zdf to x, and the second time this runs, you want to say true on the screen. What you'd have to do is change the input type to reference. So you'd go ref string s, and because you've done it in the delegate um, declaration, you have to change it in every single one of the instances of the delegate and also when you call the delegate so now when you we run the program we should say false because the first time around it doesn't contain zdf but the second time around we should say true because zdf should be added to the string so let's run that and there we go, we see false then true. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.